Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hi, I'm Port Ponky. And I'm LeBlanc. Today we are discussing Farscape, Season 1, Episode 19. Nerve. John and Chiana infiltrate the Peacekeeper Gamak base to find a cure for Aaron. How did you find this episode? I found it well. I liked it a lot. How about you? Yes, this was a, a, a fun one. I don't know if you can call it fun. Torture's fun. It makes for gripping TV. It feels slightly different to the episodes that came before it. What makes you say that? This episode feels slightly darker. It's interesting you point that out because this one, it was similar in that it had a built-in time constraint, but then it's so different in feel. It felt more dangerous than episodes before. We've had a lot of Monster of the Week episodes and disaster episodes and stuff, but here, maybe it's just because it's a to-be-continued, but um, there's a sense of helplessness. John feels properly screwed when he's found out and taken into custody. And then they can read his mind. Uh, Well, bits of it. Still being able to read anything. Uh, That's so intrusive and scary. And then they find stuff he didn't even know about. And it was awesome because one, that's really scary. And then two, they were able to tie it into a previous episode. And it upped the stakes. It was a really smart choice. Okay, so yeah, I'm being a bit hesitant about asking about this episode, and I think the reason for that is there is a lot to unpack in this one. So, yeah, okay, so John had a memory from the ancients that we never saw and he didn't know about. Yeah, those sneaky dudes tucked it away. They were quite sneaky. Um, because Kent McCord, who plays uh, John's dad and the ancient, uh, is an American actor, one of the few American actors on the show. So he had to fly over for the episodes A Human Reaction, and they filmed the scenes for the stuff you saw in this episode at that time. Ah, nice. So they planned ahead. I kept thinking while I watched those scenes, oh, they matched that episode really well, or I just don't remember it well enough, but they filmed it at the same time, then yeah, it's going to match really well. They show you clips of it, so yeah, they did match. I'm sure they could match it really well. It's just a guy in a shirt. But Yeah, but yeah, there are... take down the... the uh alien decorations and stuff and destroy them so it's hard to recreate it really bothers me that John's memories are presented like a TV show he remembers himself in third person yeah how do you know that's not how the Aurora chair works I don't and I knew you were going to bring that up but Why would it work like that? That doesn't make sense. Why would it make up data? It doesn't have that data from that angle if it's pulling from John's memory. Well, uh, memories aren't stored in first person, though. Yeah, and fine. It might have been so they could use clips to alleviate the budget. (laughs) If this was how they used clips, though, I think that they got away with it completely. 
it's fine. It serves the need of what they're trying to do. I'm just picky. Well, did you feel like it was a clips episode? Oh, no. I was just bothered that his memories are stored that way. Or okay. his memories are presented as if they're stored that way. If they'd been really forward planning, they would have filmed everything twice. W once in first person. I kept thinking about if they, if they had done that, if it would have been disorienting and stupid. Would it be weird to have John's dad talking right at us and us bobbing around looking at the room and the weird hologram thing? I don't know. Yes, it would have been weird. Yeah, it would be like Doom movie. It would be hard to visually connect up all the memories to stuff he's seen. So I This think, is such a technical point to <laughs> discuss. I know, but it really stuck with me. I think what really bothers me, that's maybe not that it's third person, but that it looks so concrete. There's nothing... Um, I don't know. Because memories are hazy, and we recreate them when we revisit them they're not totally solid and set oh yeah it would be like animated stick figures <laughs> but then you have to think about relaying this stuff to the viewer and if you just have blobs and stuff on the screen they made the right choice of i'm course complaining they made the right choice. there's no that, discussion there i know I'm complaining that they didn't make a bad choice that I didn't want them to make. Aside from the Aurora chair and the weird stuff with John's dad, there was a whole slew of characters. Um, who should we start with? The, the villain guy with the chin strap. Scorpius. Yeah, that guy. He was... is creepy. You think? Yeah, he's unsettling. Villains, when they're calm and they're not in a rush, are way scarier. So you're saying the guy that looks like a cross between a corpse and a bondage <laughs> situation, <laughs> whose mannerisms are somewhere between Hannibal Lecter and James Bond, is a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty creepy. He also seems quite calculating. He seems like an admission that Kreis is not a very good villain. When we first started watching this show, the biggest shortcoming for me was Kreis, in that yeah. I couldn't believe this is the character that they want the show to hinge on, that he's the main villain. I don't know the plans for Scorpius. I hope he sticks around, he's super creepy, and he's way better than Kreis. And by better, you mean worse. Better at being worse, yes. I mean, when Kreis was chasing John around in that weird area, it was more comical than anything. Kreis doesn't seem scary. No, he doesn't strike any fear. Nothing is being struck. Scorpius is just instantly scary. <laughs> yeah. They cut his, the, the way he's visually presented is really excellent. I was more scared by his silent introduction than anything that Crace has done. When he stands in the window of the bar. Yeah. Not the window in the doorway. Not looking in the window. Sorry. Space window. <laughs> Which also known as a door. I liked when he meets John for the first time. Oh yeah, that guy's an imposter. Sees him. Yeah. It looked like yeah. it was going to be another uh, close call where John would have to walk past this uh, strange-looking, creepy guy. You know, like, oh, will he have to bluff? Will he have to make a lucky break for it or something? Right, and he had a string of lucky breaks, so you think, oh, here's another one. Yeah, this is like the last boss of lucky breaks. <laughs> they set you up to think you'll... Uh come away without any problems. Yeah, and then they totally switch that round because Scorpius just instantly says he's an imposter without saying <laughs> anything or... I love that. No indication for how he knew. 
we don't know. It's never explained. I hope it's never explained either. Uh, it was great. How do you think he knew? Do you have a theory? I, yeah, I think it's what the PK Tech Girl said. Uh, someone probably knew the guy he was pretending to be. Scorpius may have known Lorac. Yeah. But that's too easy. I want to believe he just sensed it. Didn't like how he walked or something. Uh, he memorized everyone's face on the entire base. No, he memorized everyone's walk. <laughs> okay, yeah, even better. So he knew that was new. But that doesn't make sense because new people arrive. <laughs> <laughs> this all reminds me that the... Uh, ident chip system is really stupid and doesn't make any sense. It kind of makes sense. So you could just kill a peacekeeper, take the ident chip, and then you could walk around a lot of areas without being challenged. Yes. Okay. You would need to be absolutely crazy to attempt this, and these areas are just chock a block with peacekeepers. So it's not like you're going to start something. It's so weird to me that they have a genetic link and they don't use it unless they really want to be sure. Um, it's probably not that easy to get an ident chip considering you have to kill a commando squad <laughs> to get one <laughs> and then yeah. fly straight at the enemy right into their base full of more commandos. They must not have many breaches. I wouldn't think so. Uh, so aside from Scorpius, um, Krace returns. Uh, yay? I don't know how to feel about this. He, he made a terrible bluff. Oh, yeah, I really like how... Uh... John figured that out. Although he kept harping on it that you would think Grace would pick up. Oh, I mean, no, they're not all unharmed. But that's because I know the truth, and it's it seems obvious because I can't unknow it. It was a good disentangling of a bluff by John. Yeah, kudos to him. There's a little bit of uh, friction between Krace and Scorpius. Yeah, because Krace isn't as cool. They both want to be the main antagonist. There can be only one. Krace has a proper legacy, because he's been in the show a few times, but Scorpius is like, well, uh, I'm clearly... <laughs> I'm clearly the superior. Yeah, I'm, I'm the superior antagonist. I hope they have an antagonist off. Yes, that would be good. Oh, or bad. I don't know. It would be so one-sided. <laughs> yeah. uh, Scorpius would win almost instantly. I don't even know why I said almost. It would be instant. How do you know? What, if he's a complete weakling? Because Krace would cower and forfeit right away. Chris is no coward. In fact, he's stupidly brute-headed. Anyway, before we start writing fanfics about this... Too late. Uh, okay, well, well, you work fast. Um, Jelena returns, PK Tech Girl? Yes, more callbacks. I can't remember if you said something about whether we'd ever see her again or not, but assuming you did, then... <laughs> Whatever you said, the, this is the result. It didn't feel forced. There was a good enough reason for her to be there. I like seeing her. She has a sister with John. She's okay. She's not much of a character. Yeah, I wasn't excited to see her. If Chiana disappears and then we see her again, I would be super excited. So she she's not on that level. Chiana has had a bit more development than Jelena. Yeah, she barbecued a man alive. Yeah, she outright murdered someone. 
we wondered uh, on the cast whether she had killed someone. We don't know the answer to that, but now we know that she has now. Yes. And she didn't seem that phased by it. <laughs> no, she did not. And it was really violent. It's sort of charred, mangled corpse on the ground, which also seemed a bit odd. He was not on fire for that long. <laughs> yeah, that was a flash crisping. She was surprisingly okay with that. I would say it was self-defense. She was into it. Uh, yeah, so maybe she did kill the guy in the other episode. Maybe it wasn't Durka. Who knows? I I would be less surprised now to find out if she killed him. I felt bad during this episode for thinking that Chiana looked weird with the sebation makeup because that's closer to what the actress actually looks like. But I'm so used to Chiana's makeup. She did look a bit uncanny. They had this sort of pinkening stuff over the grey... She still acted like Chiana, though. Yeah, her voice and her movements. I really loved when she said there were instabilities in the stabilizer. <laughs> That's really funny. It's me. so bad. Yeah, it's the worst excuse you could come up with. They really hate Technobabble on this show. They don't like giving wordy, science-wordy kind of explanations for the stuff, so I imagine that was them uh, satirizing it. So now I'm assuming the writers have come out and said that. Oh, they, yeah, they were pretty open about this from very early on in the show, that they didn't like the... Uh, sometimes it's called Technobabble, sometimes it's called Treknobabble. Uh, oh, clever. Yeah, it's plagued a number of shows, a number of sci-fi shows, naming no names. And it's good. It's good that they don't put it in because it's just waffle. I always feel disconnected when there's an extended techno babble sequence. So yeah, I'm glad they avoid it. And we get great lines making fun of it, like instabilities in the stabilizer. <laughs> There's one other character who I'd like to mention. Dargo? No, like one who showed up in this episode. Oh, I just like naming characters. Rigel. Stop it. All right, let's start this game. <laughs> uh, there's one other character who showed up who I'd like to mention, not because they played any major part, but just because I felt that their small part was quite awesome. And that was uh, John's cellmate. Oh, yeah. What was your opinion of that guy? You mean Kano from Mortal Kombat? Sure. Because he has a metal plate. Yeah. And you're a platist? Uh, yes. I'm a raging, virulent platist. He was entertaining. One blip of humor in the <laughs> bleak episode. But even then, it's really dark. Yeah, I was going to say, if that's the humor, then this episode <laughs> is pretty dark. I mean, this guy seemed pretty mentally ill, possibly due to torture. Yeah, his brain is scrambled. Can't really function anymore. Or maybe he's always been like that. We don't know. Well, I want to mention Dargo. You, oh, okay. That's true, there's a whole Moya storyline. Yeah, but I don't want to get into that. I want to get into his hands. Not literally. Oh, I thought you were going to be literal, because I actually have opinions on his actual hands. Well, I can't even tell if you're joking, but at the end <laughs> of this episode, there's a close-up of his hand holding Aaron's, and his hands look superhuman yeah obviously because he's human and that's really weird because his face doesn't look human at all why would his hands yeah i know that's the same that's what i was gonna say his hands oh, always okay. look way too human and it is actually a bit distracting 
Yeah, I was so distracted. I've been able to ignore it or give it a pass before now, but th there was a close-up. They shoved it in my face, his big human hands. I agree. His hands make him look like a guy in makeup. Which <laughs> yeah. is weird, because usually it's the makeup that makes someone look like a guy in makeup. His face makeup is so excellent. Yeah. It's the one bit that doesn't have makeup that gives the game away. <laughs> it makes me so sad because his makeup is really good. And then you see his hands and you think, oh, right, that's just a dude. It's just Anthony. Anthony Simcoe. It's weird to me that they didn't do anything. <laughs> they, what? they pay so much attention to makeup and oh, yeah, I the think design it... of these characters. If you have a main character whose hands are in prosthetics, it's going to make shooting complicated. Mm, yeah. Everything's going to be so complicated by that. So I think you could just, just give just... him gloves. He does have gloves, doesn't he? Mostly. Not, not, yeah, like fingerless glove rings or something. This is our first multi part episode. What do you think will happen next time? I think John will escape and Chris will be demoted from principal antagonist. Because uh, I just thought of this right now or realized it. John and uh, Scorpius are after the same thing. They want wormholes. And so that is a great uh, thing they share. It's a Good match, I guess. But so they're going to get chased around by a guy in a base on the planet. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he'll enlist Crace and say, forget about your brother. Just find me some wormholes. This is a great prediction. Uh, and uh, PK I said that Tech Girl. You, it's very general. PK Tech Girl will die. She'll sacrifice herself. She'll die. Yeah, Ooh. she's going to die. She's going to sacrifice herself so that John can escape. The, okay. Aaron will pull through, obviously. Well, they already got the cure to her, so it would be a bit disappointing if she just <laughs> died anyway. You're two arms too late. I'm dead. Somehow talking. R.I.P. But, but dead. I have some unit news. Oh. You may not have spotted this one. I did not. Uh, Moya's sort of contractions have begun, or oh, contractions. Yeah. And they said that the baby is already over a sacmar, uh, relating to filtering poison from Aaron's body. So presumably the sacmar is some sort of size. Probably yeah, it's it's qu bigger than quite the, big, I think. It's bigger than Sackless. Oh, that's uh, that's terrible. And a, and a notch above Sack medium. Okay, yep, got it. Not as much. Uh, stop! I don't want to hear it. Sack load. Oh, <laughs> I want to hear about your sack load. I don't that's... believe you. Everyone <laughs> wants to hear about my sack load. Okay. Do you have a quote that you'd like to share? As you once said to me, you will die, but not today. You really, can't guarantee that. Yeah, it'd be really frustrating if she then died due to an <laughs> unrelated reason sometime in the remainder of that day. Yeah, what if they got hit by a meteorite or something? <laughs> a meteor? It's only a meteorite once it's impacted into a planet. Oh. All right. So what if they got hit by a meteor? Uh, then, they, well, yeah, that would be really bad. And Dargo probably wouldn't say something like, dang, I really shouldn't have promised that she would definitely not die today. I retract my statement. <laughs> you will die. And then she pulls through that one. He's like, well, maybe not today. <laughs> and another meteor hits them. It's tempting fate to say that. 
I would hate to have someone say that to me right in the beginning of the day because then I'm thinking the whole day, oh, I'm going to die. Something's going to happen just to make that ironic. He, he was just speaking statistically. He should have tacked on probably to keep you safe. Yeah. You will die, but probably not today. Chances are good, not today. Definitely going to die, though. All, all he meant was your life expectancy is a lot better looking than it was a few minutes ago. You don't know that. He could be a very literal person. Maybe there was two seconds left in the day. And so oh, he, he it, knew. Look, we don't know it, when the day ended. He didn't invent that saying. Aaron said it again. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't know what it means. He thinks it's something you say. You need to, you'd feel the need to explain this. Why did you pick it as the quote if you <laughs> just disagree with it so vehemently? It's it's just a cool sounding thing to say. It's not it's not a decree on probability. Dargo is huge on statistics. Every <laughs> off every off screen moment, he has his nose in a statistics book. I, yeah, that's utterly unbelievable. He used to be an insurance salesman, so no, he had to just calculate. stop. It's just a thing. <laughs> I know what you need to do. Go on to the next episode. That's right, because you're agitated and you need to see what happens next. I'm agitated? Yeah, because you complain about random stuff. Like John's hey. memories being third person and Dargo saying something that was flippant and not logically precise. Uh, what about the hands? I, As, I the, stand the, the by hands the hands. Is legitimate. Yeah, that bugs me in every episode where you can see Dargo's hands, even if it's just in like the side of the frame. It's, it always bugs me. Well, maybe in the next episode he'll get both his hands cut off. And Oh, that would be great. <laughs> would that be that great, though? And then he could shove a blade in there. And let it heal. So he's just got sword hands. Yeah. Gun sword hands. Gun sword hands. In both hands. Uh, at least one. And the other one, what? Like a towel dispenser or something? A uh, salt shaker. Okay. That might happen. That's a better prediction than your very general the good guys will win prediction. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty good bet. Dargo would take that bet because he knows the stats. Are on <laughs> right, his side. Okay. All right, next episode. All right.